I like to tell people that I live a life of magic and synchronicity. It's just amazing. I looked over at my husband yesterday and I said, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. You know, I'm not the richest person in the world, but I guarantee you I'm probably one of the happiest. And, you know, so I want to share with you how I came to be on this journey. I believe that God's messengers, which are the angels, and I had someone tell me the other day they didn't believe in angels, and I said, well, surely you believe in something. Whatever you believe it is that communicates you to you through God. You can call it angels. You can call it spirit. You can call it guides. It's the same energy. I just love angels, and I believe in angels. Uh, angels have always communicated with us. They're God's messengers. He created angels for that very purpose. They've communicated with us since the beginning of time to right now. I think man has just forgotten how to listen. We've kind of forgotten to look for the magic of life. And by magic, you know, I don't mean you spit on the ground, you turn around three times and magic has, woof, that puff of smoke. I mean the magical things that happened, which when, bec when we become aware of what the magic of life really is, synchronistic events, because there are no coincidences. When those little synchronicity things happen, when you're thinking of something and you turn that television set on and boom, it's in front of you, it's those things that catch our attention. It's, sometimes it's numbers, 666, 777. You see it everywhere you go. Sometimes you see the same color car over and over again. Pay attention to those things. Pay attention. Because God and the angels are in constant communication with us. So let me tell you what happened to me about seven or eight years ago. I was at a pretty low point in my life. I had had a stroke. It had paralyzed a side of my body. I was recuperating from uh, something called chronic fatigue uh, and adrenal fatigue. Um, I was really asking God, I was 53, and I wanted to know, I always felt like I had this huge life purpose. What is my life purpose? You know, I, I want to get well. I want to help people. I knew I'd always wanted to help people. So I had taken Reiki 1 and 2, and I really felt like I was a healer. So what I want to tell you right now is sometimes what we think we are supposed to do, don't put limitations on God because there are no limitations. And sometimes what we think our calling is may not be what our calling is. Almost everyone that I've ever talked to that has found out what their, you know, what their true life purpose is, it involves walking through fears. I believe and I always tell people we have to step through fears and then the magic is on the other side. You know, stop and think about it. I have to step through fears to get up and talk to people. I'm, I'm, it doesn't come easy for me. So about seven years ago, I had been through this low point in my life and I was sitting at a red light in Fort Worth on my way to work. And I looked up at this bus that was perpendicular to me. And on the top of this bus, in big, bold, green letters, was the word Raphael. I looked at that and then I looked away and I thought, wow, there's not a street in Fort Worth named Raphael. This was like where the next destination was that this bus was headed. And I looked back and it said Rosedale. But I promise you, I saw Raphael for that split second. <clears throat> and I didn't know what Raphael meant. So I called my husband and I said, do you know what Raphael means? I just saw it on this bus. And he said, I think that's one of the archangels. And I said, huh, wonder if it's the archangel of healing, because I was Reiki 1 and 2. I thought I was, you know, I was considering myself a healer. 
And he said, I think it is, Google it. So I Googled Raphael. Archangel Raphael is the Archangel of Heal. I can't explain the feeling. It was like, wow. I was like on the side of a cliff, fixing to jump off. I knew something was happening. I'd never, nothing like that had ever happened to me. I had never seen something with my physical eyes that wasn't there. So I said, wow, I know you're talking to me. You know, I've been praying for this. Tell me, give me the signs. Send me the signs. Give me the signs. I've always been one that asks for signs. I've also always been one that stays in direct communication with God. I talk to God all the time. So I got home from work that night. My husband was out of town. I turned the TV on. And it was either on the History Channel or the Science Channel. I didn't even change the channel on the TV. I turned it on and there was a program on about Raphael, Michael, and Gabriel. They were talking about the history of these angels, the beliefs, the energies of these angels. And I sat down on my couch, and this is like a two-hour program, with my mouth wide open and I just watched this program. And when it was over, I felt like I had one foot on earth and the other foot in heaven. I mean, I get the bumps down my arms just talking about this. So I said, I started crying first. You know, I'm, I'm a crier. Why me? And that's when my clear audience kind of opened up and I heard in my mind's eye and in my inner ear, well, you love angels look around. I have this beautiful picture above the TV that my husband painted of our souls ascending to heaven and the angels guiding our souls up. I have all of these collections of Reader's Digest books on angelic encounters. I love to read about other people's angelic encounters. I have all of these home interior angel statues. Yes, I've always loved angels. It makes sense. It makes sense. So I said, I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know where you're guiding me, but tell me what you want me to do, and I will do it. I knew I was being guided to do something. And about a week later, a friend of mine, PJ Spur, in Dallas, called me, and she said, Patty, I'm going to study under... Doreen Virtue's son, Charles Virtue, to learn, to learn to read angel cards. Would you like to go? And I thought, I've never heard of such a thing, but I think I'm supposed to. So I said, sure. Um, it was kind of expensive. She said, you've got time to save the money to go. And so I went. It was a pretty extensive three-day workshop, and it was absolutely amazing. And at the, on the last day of that workshop, a lady sat in front of me, and we were channeling. I'm sorry. I wish I had a Kleenex. Does anybody have one? My nose is running. So I, I, oh, no, you don't leave. I'll be fine. I'll just, so anyway, I, this lady sits in front of me, and I closed my eyes. And I saw this little girl running up and down the stairs with long, thank you, my dear, with long, curly, blonde hair. Now, the lady in front of me was Asian. And what we learned in that class is that when we do this work, we're like telephones. Whatever comes in, we're supposed to say. And so I told her, I said, wow, the minute you sat down and I closed my eyes, I see this little girl running up and down these stairs with long, long, curly hair, and she's looking over her shoulder, and she's saying, look, Mommy, I can walk. Look, Mommy, I can run. I said, I get the impression this little girl can't walk and run. Sherry, we've become really good friends, looked at me, and she said, oh, my gosh, that's my daughter. And I said, you have a blonde-headed daughter with curly hair. You know, Sherry's Asian. And she said, yes, I do. And I said, well, I, I see her walking and running and smiling. 
she said, Kaylee is her daughter's name, was born with a genetic disorder, and she can't walk or run. And she said, I had a dream that I was supposed to come to this class because I was supposed to meet an older lady with long dark hair that was going to give me a message about my daughter and that lady would have a black shawl. I kid you not, I reached behind my chair and I pulled my black shawl off of my chair. Okay, what I want to tell you is that we are all healers to one another. We heal others on many, many different levels in many, many different ways. I did not know I, I had, I, I don't even know that I've had this gift since I was born. I think this gift was bestowed upon me because I said I will do the work. I agreed. I will do the work. I agreed that night on the drive home from Houston. I said I will do this work if you make it easy. If you give me the messages, I will say what I hear. I will say what I get. I will say what I feel, what I see. And I don't have 30 years to learn how to read tarot cards, nor do I have the energy to want to sit and read a book on what tarot cards need, mean. Give me the ability to do this intuitively, just like I did all weekend long, and I'll do this work for you. And, you know, within three months, I was reading at the Dallas Psychic Fair. I used to read at five or six different fairs. I've had to cut back on that. I've got only so many hours and only so much energy. I do a lot of phone readings now. They're just as powerful. You can still get in someone's energy. I'm constantly learning new things. I'm constantly stretching my boundaries. I'm constantly... I'm a Gemini. Do I know a whole lot about things? I don't. So a few years ago, I was in meditation, and I was told, you're going to start speaking, and you're going to start teaching. And I immediately said, oh, I, I don't know everything there is to know about anything. I can't do that. They said, you know enough to begin. You know enough to begin. You can continue to learn. So if you are a healer and you're on a healing journey and you have information that you have, now's the time to share it with others. Because there are people out there that are just beginning their journey. They're just beginning and, and they resonate with your energy and they need teachers. They need someone to share information with them. They really do. That was one of my main messages. So I teach little workshops and I teach people how I don't really teach them. I just help them open up to the gifts. So what I'm going to tell you in the way of finding what it is that you, that your heart desires and finding the magic is every morning before your feet hit the ground, I want you to connect with source, with your angels, whoever it is that you communicate with, and say, today, show me the magic. Show me the magic. It's as simple as that. Show me the magic. And you're going to find that it's going to be amazing. It is amazing. And then you have to open up your eyes. And you have to look for that. You know, are, are people telling me repetitive things over and over again? Are you getting out of the house and putting yourself in those places where you can meet people? Does something tug at your heart that you just really know that you need to be doing for people? Are you a healer? Does it bring you joy to, do you hug people that are in, you know, can you inspire people with your life story? Maybe you're a speaker. Maybe you, you know, maybe it's different for all of us. And like I mentioned a while ago, I believe that we're all healers to one another. And sometimes it's as simple 
that's walking in Walmart and telling the lady in the line behind you, oh my gosh, you've got the most beautiful smile I've ever seen. Your hair is so pretty. I love your energy. A lot of people don't know what you're talking about when you say energy, so be careful with that one. You know, your neighbor's going through a hard time. Just give her a hug. I'm a giver. I am such a giver. There is nothing in this world that makes me feel as good as to be able to give. And I'm not talking big amounts of money. I'm not talking things that I can't afford. But you know what I've found to be true is that the more I give, the more God gives me back. Let go of those fears. Let go of the fears of not having enough. Learn to trust. Learn to walk in faith. Step through those fears that are holding you back from doing some of the things that you really feel like you need to be doing. Listen to your heart. Listen, listen to your own heart. And, and, and do what you need to do to, to find that magic. I um, think we always have to say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, angels. One thing I learned in that class, and I hope this is all making sense because I, I don't have any of this written down. I go over it in my mind and I think, I don't want to forget to tell them this and this and this and this. But one thing that I learned in that class is if you get a sign and you think, you think it's a sign, but you're not sure, all you have to do is say, tell me that in a different way. I'm not sure that that was communication from you. I think it was. Give it to me in a different way. I know, and I'm not going to tell you I believe. I know that when we acknowledge that we're receiving information and messages by saying thank you, thank you, that it gets stronger, that the messages get stronger, that the communication will get stronger. It's not that we're building up the egos or anything. It's just that I truly believe that call them your guides, your angels, they watch us continually and they know what books we've read. They know the programs we watch on TV. Every now and then mediumship comes in. I don't call myself a medium. And I, it doesn't scare me. There was a time when it did. I had physical knocking on the wall. That's how strong it was. And I said, you're scaring me. Go away. I don't want to do this. So now it's very soft and it's very sweet and it's very gentle. It doesn't come through all the time. I don't call myself. Sometimes it does. I, they know what books I've read. They know that I know what certain things are, and those are the images that they'll show me. I ask any good medium, and he'll say, start looking at cars, and because they're going to start showing you what cars they drove, so you better know what kind of car it was. The more we accept the communication, whatever it is, and mediumship, is, it's not... It's not a scary thing for me anymore. It, it was at one time, but it's not. It's not. Um, spirit communicates with us on all different levels. I tell people, don't put any limits on God. Don't put any limits on what's on the other side. Just, you know, be open to it. Trust your intuition. If you pick up a book, or if you go to a teacher and it doesn't resonate with you, don't go. It should resonate with you. It should feel comfortable. I've had certain teachers and a lot of books that I've given to other people because for some reason they just didn't resonate with me. And then maybe a couple of years later I'll pick up that book and I'll go, wow, that resonates with me now. Maybe I'm at that point in this journey where that makes a little bit more sense. <coughs> but we all have that God-given gift of intuition. We all have the ability to communicate with our angels and our guides. 
um, you know, so I think it's as simple as before you get out of bed, ask for the magic. Ask for the magic. Um, connect in prayer. Try to meditate a little while each morning. Prayer to me is like when we're requesting something. Meditation is when we're listening and receiving messages. My pillowcases that I sell were a result of meditation. I love to quilt. I don't have time to quilt. Show me something I can do so I can still buy this fabric that I like so much and touch it and sew that I can make really fast. And they gave me a prayer pillowcase, the design, even the name. They as in God, Source, Angels. So that's what I do. I um, still work the corporate job full time. Um, it's kind of hard to juggle all of this, and I keep, you know, asking Source, what should I give up? Should I give up making the cases? Should I give up reading? Uh, should I give up teaching the workshops? And they keep adding more and more stuff for me to do. So there's my answer. One of these days I won't be doing a corporate job anymore, and I'll be doing, strictly doing this. We've got a couple more minutes left. I want to tell you about a little story in Ireland that happened. I'm married to the most wonderful man. It's always been my desire to travel. And so now I get to travel. I get to travel a lot. Um, and we do it on a really strict budget. So it's, you know, Hotwire is my secret. Hotwire.com. Cheap, cheap. So we were sitting in Ireland one day uh, having breakfast in a little pub. I love people. I love to talk to people. And this little old man came in. And someone dropped him off. He couldn't even drive. And he sat down next to me. And so I looked over and said good morning to him. And he sat there and he rolled his eyes up. And he said, Ah, we have two daughters. Kelly and Sheila. I looked at him and I said, yes, I do, Kelly and Charlotte. And he said, you're Elaine. And I said, yes, I am. My maiden name is Lane and I married Elaine. I'm Elaine. <laughs> and he said, your, your family is over in Lanesboro. And I said, well, that makes sense, I'm Lane. <laughs> and he said, you're meant to write a book. And I said, huh. And you know, I've been, I've been writing a book for the last 10 years. <laughs> and he said, it's meant, it's, it is meant to be called Understanding the Process. And he gave me some long name. And then he said, uh, he said one more profound thing. Oh. I said, I said, you know, this is my husband. I said, we re reconnected after being apart for 33 years. And he said, 33 years and six months. And you know what? I'll be darned when we got home, if he wasn't right, we looked up and it was 33 years and six months. I would have never had that conversation with that man if I hadn't looked over and said hello. I don't know who he was. His name was Edgar. The waitress came in and she said, Ah, oh, you've been having a conversation with Edgar. Is he giving you advice? And I said, Yeah, as a matter of fact, he is. She said, She winked at me and she says, Edgar gives really good advice. That is magic. That is magic. Open yourself up to it. Don't set limitations on God. Don't set limitations on the synchronistic events and the things that God and the angels can put in place for us. So that is my, you know, ask for the magic before your feet hit the ground, before you get out of the bed in the morning. Say, show me the magic today. Show me the synchronicities. Stay in the light. Trust your intuitive guidance. Always stay in the light. You know, keep your vibrations high if you can. I'm not a real loud, jumpy around kind of person. But I really, I, I try not to let those negative thoughts 
come into my mind. I replace everything with positive, good, grateful thoughts. If you're having a really bad day and you feel really bad and low, go out and do something for somebody. Go out and do some little something for someone. Go through your closets and take some things to the women's shelter. Do something that makes you feel good about yourself. Love yourself. That's one of the things that we've not ever been taught. There's so much criticism about, you know, especially for women, our looks, you're overweight, you know, you're not, don't have a college degree. Love yourself. Use affirmations. Look at yourself in the, your eyes in the mirror. Read Louise Hay's books about healing yourself. Look yourself in the eyes and say, you tell yourself you're worthy, you're loved. We are all, all here at this, on this planet at this time, I truly, truly believe, because people need so much healing. We're all on a journey with healing. People need so much healing, and we can find, and we can help. If you write, the write inspiration things. Write down prayers for people, sleep with them. There's power in the written prayer. There's power in, in the direct connect, connection with source. There's a different vibration. I'm a, I'm a metaphysical minister, so it's about the metaphysics for me. Um, Reiki, I teach Reiki. It's energy healing, it's energy work. We can change people's lives with our energies. Our energies affect one another. If you're in a room of two minutes, Jason says, if you walk into a room and there's a lot of little vibrations in there, you probably feel that. You know, raise those vibrations. Say, you know, intentionally try to help people raise their vibrations. Raise your own vibration. It's, it's really much easier to do than you would think that it, that it is. It's by our thoughts and our hearts. Open up your heart chakra to that room. Intentionally imagine that you're that you're helping some of those people that are suffering. Um, it's all about energy, it really is. So, that is my little speech, uh, <laughs> or talk. I said I wasn't gonna call it a speech. So I'm right out here, come by and visit me. If you're interested in Reiki classes, uh, just come by and visit with me. I know that Jimmy will be in here in a few minutes, so um, those that can stay and listen to him speak, he's, he's pretty, Pretty amazing. A real scholar on ancient Gnostic texts.